clear blue water Take me home Soggy bottom by you, boy Play me a song Clear blue water Take me home Bring back them good old days I used to know Must have been something in the water In that old sawmill creek Baptized in the holler I got down on my knees Afternoon guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School Try here with our fishery gunner, our little bushcraft stringer here. Pretty simple situation. I want to talk to you a little bit about these fish. Give you a little sunfish education 101 real quick. Then we're going to use a new product by Bup Outdoors, which is a folding cutting board I want to show you guys. And we're going to get these fish prepped up so we can have some lunch. Let me move this camera in, guys. Okay, let's talk about a little bit of Sunfish 101 here real quick. Um, a lot of sunfish in the sunfish family in the state of Ohio and all over eastern woodlands. You have the largemouth bass, obviously is a big sunfish. Smallmouth bass, crappie, bluegill. And then you have different subspecies of fish that are similar to bluegills. You have the long ear, which is what this one is. And it has a long ear on the back of the gill right here. You have the green sunfish, which is what this one is which has a rounded pectoral fin. And then you have a pumpkin seed, which has a pointed pectoral fin. that looks very similar to this. And then you have an orange spotted sunfish. And a lot of these different types of sunfish, bluegill, whatever you want to call them, interbreed. So you get hybrids of all of those fish in the same pools of water. But the, the small sunfish species like the green sunfish, the long ear, and things like that, all thrive in water that you wouldn't think fish would live in very well and the other reason that they do that is because they don't get very big this is a this is a full grown green sunfish four to six inches as big as they get this is a full grown long ear four to six inches as big as they get so while these may look like small fish for this species these are big fish but they're definitely edible sized fish so let's get these things processed real quick here and what we're going to do is we're going to pour some water Try to keep them from jumping into the grass here. I'm going to pour some water into the pan here real quick. And I'm going to put them in there for the moment. This is the folding cutting board by Buff Sports. Folds out flat. Pretty nice cutting board, really. I've got my Mora Bushcraft Black. I'm going to use to process these fish. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get right behind the pectoral fin here and I'm going to cut the head off this fish just like this to make sure that he's dead because they're not dead yet I don't want him to have to suffer when I pull that out most of that's going to bring the guts with it I caught a little bit of ear right there you can see most of the guts came with that I'll set that head off to the side there for a minute reach in and pull the rest of those guts out with my finger pretty simple way to do this really get all that stuff out now all this stuff makes great bait I mean this is all going to be good bait to catch other fish with once you've got that cleaned out now you would scale this fish generally with the head on but because the fish was not dead yet I wanted to go ahead and cut his head off and kill him Instead of making him suffer. So I'm going to scale him after the fact and try to pin his tail down. And all you're doing is going the reverse of the scales on the fish with the edge of your knife. It's pretty simple. And then that skin is edible. We'll go ahead and cut those two fins off right there. We don't need those on. Once we get that done, this fish is going to be ready to be cooked as is. Kind of hard to hold those things down when you don't have the head on there to hold on to when you're trying to hold on to the tail. A little clip to 
clip that tail down will help you if you want to use some type of like paper paper clip device like you'd use to clip papers together with will work just fine on the end of your cutting board and then you'll be able to scale your fish a whole lot easier that way and we're just going to rinse him off in the water rinse our cutting board off real quick here for the next fish pretty simple stuff and you can see all I did here to get these dudes on this makeshift stringer was I just tied a slip knot in the end of this string so I could make like a noose with it and just ran it through ran the string through his gills if I couldn't get it through his gills because his mouth was too small I could just carve myself a stick for a pointed end on this thing and drill a hole in it with my awl shove this in and lace it in and then I'd have an actual stringer I could have put a T on this if I wanted to with a stick but for these fish just a piece of bank line works fine <coughs> alright same thing with this guy we got to get rid of the head first because he's not dead yet. Okay. Rinse these dudes off real good. If you feel any scales on there, you can always scrape those off after the fact. If you feel a couple on there somewhere, just scrape them off. It's not a big deal. Okay. We're ready to go into the frying pan for these guys. that plenty hot. We're just going to throw them fish right in it. Like that. Like that. Quick and dirty. Ain't nothing to it. Put a little Old Bay seasoning here. One there. Flip them over one time in that hot grease. Season the other side. Once you get that old iron skillet hot, it's going to cook them small fish pretty fast. Ain't too much messing around you got to do. Just got to keep it in and out of there and keep it hot. Don't even have to keep it directly in the fire very long. Okay guys, that's about as quick and dirty as you're going to do it. Less than 10 minutes to cook that. No breading, nothing special. A little bit of seasonings. Some grease or fat or oil. And this stuff is going to separate from the bones pretty easy. You'll be able to see those bones. Right there's the rib cage. You can see it right there. So you can pull that right off the rib cage just like that. 
and that skin's edible too. There's plenty of nutrients in that skin. You can eat that with no problem. Once you've got the scales off of it, not a problem. Plenty of meat right there to be had. I was going to kind of scrape it all into a pile for you guys to show you the difference between what's meat and what's not, I guess. Get that fin out of our way. Mr. Ant coming along trying to get him get in on the action there. We don't want him. Again, and once you pull this, right there's your rib cage. Right there's just about all the bones just came out right there. There's even a little bit of meat left on them. Right there's your whole skeletal structure, except for your top, and it's right there. So you got a little bit of a bone right there, and you can feel around that stuff, and you can tell. So you got plenty of meat right there off of that fish. All of that is the meat off of one fish. All that's good edible meat off one fish. So you got a second fish here. It's going to be the same deal. We got this much meat off of them two fish. That's quite a bit of sustainable protein right there just off of two small fish. Alright guys. There's definitely some... Oh man. <laughs> I'm going to tell you boys. That's some good meat. And chewed up really good. Make sure there's no bones in it. But I'll tell you what. That's some of the best eating meat you're ever going to get. There's quite a bit there for two little fish. Good finger food. Excellent eating. Mm. Be all in on that. Finger looking good. Man, is that good. Well, fellas. I'm going to finish it up. I appreciate you joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my friends, affiliates, sponsors, my instructors. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, fellas. Man. Golly. Turn the camera off. I'm eating.